Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from computergargar.com and in this video we are going to look at how to insert the tick symbol into an Excel spreadsheet. I was asked the other day on one of my training sessions how to do this and my initial response was why are you doing it? What is the scenario that you're using? because there are so many different ways that we can get this tick symbol to appear. And we are going to look at five ways of doing that in this video. Now let's begin with this table I have in the top left corner, where I have a huge list of tasks and the status in column B as to whether it is completed yet, whether it's still in progress, or whether it has not yet started. And maybe we want to have a tick to resemble that it's complete in column C. Now the simplest way of doing this is to insert the symbol. So if I'm on cell C2 and I come to my insert tab, over to the symbol button, that will open up this window with all of the symbols. And maybe when you do that, you will see the tick symbol. If you don't, you want to navigate to the Wingdings font, which is what I'm on at the moment. If you're not, you can just select your Wingdings font. And then it's a case of finding it. Now to get to it quickly, rather than scrolling through this list, I'm going to come to this character code box, currently saying 32, and type 252 because that is the character code for the tick and I can see the cross symbol literally next to it. If I insert that and close this box down, the tick is entered into cell C2. I can then happily enter that and copy and paste it into any other box that I may want the tick to appear. So that's nice and simple, especially when you know the 252 shortcut to save scrolling through a list. But it is completely manual entry to do that. And we're going to look at some automated ways really soon. But let's just take what we just did one step further. So I'm just going to select these cells and clear them. Where am I going? Home, clear those. Because here is the next scenario. We can use a keyboard shortcut. Now for this one, I'm going to start by selecting the cells in question and I'm going to apply the font of Wingdings 2 for this keyboard shortcut to work. So Wingdings 2. And we can apply this in advance, depending on your scenario, if it's a set group of cells, or we can just select column C. Windings 2 is automatically applied, or already applied is what I mean. Now in cell C2, I can simply do Shift P. Now that's not really a keyboard shortcut, because all I'm doing is entering an uppercase P. But in the Windings 2 font, the uppercase P is the tick symbol, and if you wanted a cross, the uppercase O, so shift O, is your cross symbol. So I could very quickly enter this data into here and say, right, this is a completed one. This is another completed one by using simply typing shift P or shift O. So it's still manual, but with those cells formatted in advance, it's very quick and simple. Now let's start looking at some automated ways. And let's use the if function to test the status of a cell and then to apply the tick or maybe the cross icon. So in cell C2, let me zoom in on that cell and let's use the if function. And for logical test, I'm going to test if cell B2 equals complete comma if it does I want the tick symbol and there's a few different approaches to put that in there but I'm going to use the character code function and I'm going to request character code 252 
which we spoke about in the first example where we inserted it as a symbol. But now we're getting the if function to do it so that we don't have to do it ourselves. Close bracket, comma, do I want a value if false? Yes, we could do anything at this point, but let's use the character code symbol to put 251 in. Now you may not want to show across, you may just want the ticks, like I demonstrated in the first example, and that's fine, you could show a word, you can make the cell blank, you could even leave it out. But if I press enter on this and copy it down, it's going to show these maybe strange icons, depending on what you've seen before. But what we can do is change this to the Wingdings 2 font. We need it in the Wingdings 2 font, or sorry, the Wingdings font in this case, so that it shows the ticking across. To repeat, that was the Wingdings font from the first example. So there we have our ticks and crosses. Now, if I click on one of those cells up in the formula bar, you can still see that formula and you can go back and edit it at a later point. By using the if function or other logical functions, we can make a testing much more strenuous than that. You know, we could have brought in and functions and or functions. So it can be a very powerful uh, way of, of automating putting ticks and crosses and coming away from kind of human error. Now for the next example, we want to look at conditional formatting. What a wonderful tool that is. And we're going to use this on this invoice list to the right of the table we've been working on. This time we have invoices and we have an amount paid and an amount that was due. So column G, sorry, column G has got the due amount and column H has the paid amount. And we want ticks and crosses in column I. Now for conditional formatting, there needs to be a value in the cell that we're putting an icon set into. So I'm going to begin by clicking in cell I2 and just writing a really simple formula that's just going to subtract the paid amount from the amount that's due. So G2 minus H2. So that when I press enter and copy that down, we're going to get a zero if it's been paid. And we're going to get some kind of number if it has not been paid. And then we can use a conditional formatting rule on that. So with those cells selected, conditional formatting. Now I do want to use an icon set, these ticks and crosses. But I'm not going to use them through there. I'm going into new rule. And then the bottom of the window, icon sets. And I'm going to set this up myself. Just move this to the right of what we're working with. And not have them put an example in that I need to change. Now the icon style is going to be ticks and crosses. There they are. And it comes in with the tick first and we have to set the criteria. Now it's default to, to a type of percent. And I'm changing those two types to number because I'm checking the number in the cell that I've currently got selected. And you see the options they give you in the drop down are just greater than or equals or greater than. And remember the information we've got here. If it's a zero or a number bigger than that, then there's still an amount to pay. Oh, sorry, if it's a number bigger than zero, then it's an amount to pay. If it's zero or a number less than, then you've paid it off. Maybe you've paid too much, but it's paid off. So I'm going to change this first logical symbol to greater than zero, because that indicates that it's not done yet. And although they start with a tick, we can use this drop down arrow and change that to a cross. We've got other types of ticks and crosses here, but let's go for this typical red cross. Then I'm going to say, don't worry about the last one. And I'm going to change this one to a green tick. So in conclusion, if it's a number bigger than zero, uh, then it's going to be that there's still money paid red cross. If it's a number that's kind of zero or less, then it's going to be the green tick. So when I click okay, it is applied. 
Now the number is still there at the moment and maybe you want that because it shows you how much left you've got to pay and it might be useful to you and of, of interest in this kind of scenario. But if you didn't, because really we're here to learn about putting a tick symbol in, conditional formatting, manage rules, edit the rule and show icon only. Click OK, OK again. Now we only have the ticks and crosses. So that is a conditional formatting approach. It can be limited in the way that you write conditions. And we kind of saw that they're having to think about how am I going to get the ones that are paid and the ones that are not to get done. And we're able to achieve it. Now in this final example, we're going to look at formulas and conditional formatting being used together and I want to take us back to the first table I'm going to clear whatever I've got in those cells and let's put in an if function because I maybe want the ticks and the crosses from the conditional formatting rules but We've already seen how we create that rule, that it had to be like greater than or equals. And if I remind us what it looks like, if I just select these cells and go back into conditional formatting, new rule, icon sets. From this drop down on the right, we had options for number, we had percent, we had formula. But in column B of this data, I have words complete, not started in progress. So these conditional formatting rules are quite limited. Let me cancel them. So we're going to use an if function to you know, give a, a nice simple setup for it. In cell C2, I'm just simply going to write an if function that will test cell B2 to see if it's equal to complete. That'll be nice. And if it is, I'm going to get it to show number one, comma, if it's not, I'm going to get it to show number two, close bracket. Once again, please remember that by using formulas, we can create much more intense conditional logic than that if we needed to. And the fact that we know conditional formatting works on this kind of tiered process, like if it's bigger than this one or bigger than this one or bigger than this one, then we can just create some kind of numeric process like that, like I've done with a one and a zero, but you could have had a three, then a two, then a one, then a zero, if you wanted a bit more. Now, I'm gonna press enter, copy down, we've got a one, we've also got some zeros. Not particularly impressive at the moment, but we're gearing this up for conditional formatting. So if I come out of there, my cells are selected, conditional formatting, new rule, icon sets, tick and across. Change the last one saying percent to number so we can look at the numbers we've got in the cell. And we want to know a tick if it is greater than or equal one. Then I'll change this one to an X and tell the other one that I'm not interested. And if it's a zero or less, then it's going to be across. Show icon only, click OK. Now we've got ticks for complete, crosses for ones that aren't. And I know that if I use the drop down list I have in for cell task three to say it's now complete, that will automatically turn into a tick. So we've got different ways of automating this, conditional formatting have some built in ticks and crosses, but the logic is not extremely flexible. By using formulas, we have extreme flexibility. It may not be as straightforward, though. And we've seen how we can use character codes, but now more recently, um, kind of setting up uh, a simpler conditional formatting rule.